sat there at my rotary grinder and watched the calendar. I didn't have to mark the days off. I knew when they were. It was tomorrow I'd have to go watch the grinder and the soapy water watch it. And tomorrow I'd have to go watch it, watch it, watch it. This is Metamorphosite, the suspense story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. High Adventure, the telling of strange stories of strong men living the greatest and most exciting moment of a lifetime, their moment of high adventure. And on the agenda at the meeting is a story called Metamorphosite, the author and director, Robert Monroe. And to tell it, here's the man who lived it, Van Morone. Van? I guess everybody in the world has a problem. Maybe a lot of people have had the same kind I have. I don't know, because I never had the chance to find out. I had a pretty sheltered life when I grew up. My parents always saw that I got everything I wanted. But they died soon after I married Jody and I had to go out and make a living. I was never used to working with people too much, so when I got the job with Rustler and Martins, it was pretty hard. It wasn't much, just handling a rotary surface grinder to polish the sides of knife blades. I don't know how long it was I'd been working there, maybe five or six years when this problem started. We'd been invited out on a very special dinner engagement and I was having trouble finding the place. You think he'd at least have told you the right address? I got it right now, Jody. It was 323 instead of 232. Are you sure? The drugstore had a new phone book, so it must be right. Well, I wouldn't invite anybody to dinner and make them have to stop and look up the address. Mr. Evans probably thought I knew it. More than likely, he told you and you forgot it. Oh, no, I, I don't think he did. I wouldn't be surprised. You even forgot he asked us until today, then you suddenly remembered. Oh, Van, I don't know what I'm going to do with you sometimes. It was weeks ago that he asked us, Jody. Suppose you'd forgotten completely about it wouldn't do that. You might have. Suppose you didn't remember until tomorrow. Your employer, your boss, asked you to dinner. First time he's shown any interest now, in Jody. you. And... Oh, I don't know. And don't call me Jody. All right, Joe. Josephine. Look at these beautiful big homes. Hmm. They are big. I wonder what it's like to live in a house that big. Mr. Evans lives along here somewhere. Three, two, three, remember? Yes, Jody. There's 319. The next one, Van. Oh, it's a big place. It should be, with the money he's got. <laughs> Don't turn so fast. It was sharper than it looked. Isn't that a beautiful lawn? Mm-hmm. Nice and green. Drive up to the front entrance, Van. All right. Must be the gardener there by the flower bed. Yes, I guess they can afford... Oh, no, no, that, that's Mr. Evans. You sure? Mm-hmm, sure. I've seen him when he came through the shop. I still don't understand it. He doesn't even know you to speak to you, and he invites. Stop the car, Van. Well, I thought you said to drive up to It'll the It'll be front. nice and informal to greet Mr. Evans while he's relaxed with his flowers. It's probably his hobby, Van. Stop right up there. All right, Jody. Please, Van. Josephine. I'm sorry. very courteous. He's not even bothering to come meet us. Well, maybe he wants us to go to the house. No. We can be as informal as he can. Come on. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, I, uh... Yes? I... Hello, Mr. Evans. How do you do? We, we're a little late because I didn't get the house number right. Late? Of course, not much, but I thought I'd better tell you why. Well, I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, it's not important, I guess, because Jody says it's stylish to be a little late, but I thought I'm that Mrs. I... Marola, Mr. Evans. I don't trust Van to getting around to formal introductions. Mrs. Marola? I think you have a very lovely bed of perennials. Don't you think so, Van? Hmm? Oh, yes. It I... must be your hobby. No, I like to put her around. I understand. I do, too. I think it was so nice of you to invite Van and myself. Invite you? I don't believe Van even thought you remembered him. Oh, one moment, please. But then when he said you'd asked us for dinner, well, frankly, I was as surprised as he was. There must be some mistake here. Mistake? There must be. Van said you were Mr. Evans. Yeah, I am. Now, Jody. The Mr. Evans who owns Russell and Marden's hardware? Yes. Then there's no mistake. I'm sorry, but there is. I don't believe we've met before. Of course, you haven't met me, but you know my husband, Van. Do I? Why, yes, Mr. Evans. I work in the grinding room at the plant. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, your face is somewhat familiar. This is the night you asked us for dinner. I asked you to dinner? That's right. You remember? 
I'm sorry, but I don't. What? Van. I don't recall inviting you to dinner. As a matter of fact, I don't even know your name. Well, of course you do. I'm, I'm Van Marola. I, I work on the Blanchard, grinding 264 blades. I'm always glad to meet my employees personally, Marola, but this is hardly the place and time. You didn't invite us to dinner tonight? I'm sorry, no. Of course you did, Mr. Evans. When? Why, a couple of weeks ago. I was demagnetizing the chuck, and just as I was about to put a new piece on the if plate... If you'll excuse you me. You came over and put your arm around my shoulder, and you said, Van... You must have been drunk. Oh. And I want to tell oh, you no, I don't... no, no, no. You said, Van, I want you and the wife to come up to my place for dinner. I'm sure I didn't say any such thing. Well, then I asked you when, and, and you said three weeks from that Friday. I almost forgot about it until today, but well, here we are. That's the strangest fabrication I ever heard. What are you after, Marola? Well, I'm, I'm not after anything. We just came to dinner like you asked us to. I didn't ask you to dinner. You didn't? No, I didn't. You must have been dreaming. Dreaming? Now, will you kindly leave my premises, or shall I call someone to show you off? Dreaming. Come on, Van. I've never been so embarrassed in my entire life. Van, how could you do it? I don't know. To make up such a wild lie as that. I don't blame Mr. Evans, whatever he thinks of this. Didn't you know that you'd be found out? Did you think you could walk right into somebody's house and put across a story like that? Oh, Van. I don't know. Why didn't you tell me it was a joke or something? If I'd known it was a lie or a joke, but to make up something like this and then try to brazen it out. Did you think I wanted to have dinner with the great Mr. Evans that much? Why did you do it, Van? Why? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Dreaming. I couldn't tell my own wife, Jody. I couldn't tell Mr. Evans how right he'd been. The moment he'd said it, I knew it had been a dream. I dreamed that he's asked us to dinner, and as the weeks passed, I turned the dream into reality. I hadn't lied. I was sure it had actually happened. I was sure of it. But it had only been a dream. We drove home, ate without saying a word, and I lay down on the couch in the front room. Jody was somewhere in the kitchen washing the dishes. She was unhappy, and I was the cause of it. I wouldn't let it happen again. I wouldn't let it happen again. Dan. Dan. Dan, are you asleep? What? Oh, no, dear, I'm awake. I'll have dinner ready in a few minutes. Jody. Yes? Come here. What do you want, honey? I quit my job today. Good. Old man Evans wanted me to stay, but I quit. Serves him right, trying to bribe you with that big dinner the other night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm through with him. Jerry's coming over in a few minutes, and we're going to talk business. Did he quit, too? Mm-hmm. We're going to start a plant of our own. Dan. Like it? It's wonderful. I figured it was about time I got out and did something big. You'll do big things, Van. I know you will. Hey, what do you say we take Jerry and go out and celebrate, huh? I'd love it, honey. We're going places and do up the town, honey. Put the stuff on the stove back in the icebox. I'll buy us a dinner at the best restaurant. Oh, that's Jerry now. I'll get it. Uh-huh. Hiya, Brain. <laughs> it's Jerry, all right. Come on in. Well, no more rides to work. Nope. Trouble was, we never knew how smart Van here was, Judy. <laughs> He's swell-headed enough. Well, I have a right to be. I don't deny that, big shot. Now, come on, let's talk business. You build them and I'll sell them. I'll get dressed. You going out? We're all going out and celebrate. Hey, that's all right. I want to talk over a few things first. Sure, Chief, sure. Well, first of all, I think I got all the papers straight on the patent knife. That ought to be our first product. You know best, Van. I'll design the dice for it as soon as I can, Jerry. Now, what about the factory building? Well, I went over on my lunch hour like you told me to. Good. Van. And just as you thought, we can get it cheap if we play it careful. Van. 
Dan. What's the matter? I don't know. Nothing, nothing, I guess. Come on. So I told the guy we'd let him know tomorrow. Dan, wake up. Hey, are you listening to me? I... Yeah, sure I am. Go ahead. Act like somebody's bothering you. I don't know. I just feel funny. Hungry? Dan. Yeah, maybe that's it. I'll get Jody and we'll go out. Now you're talking my language. Dan, will you please wake up? Can you beat it? For years, we drive past that plant. You'll be late again. Now you and me will be running the place ourselves. Jerry's outside honking, Dan. Too bad you're Van instead of Tom. Then we'd be Tom and Jerry Incorporated. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Dan, will you wake up? <laughs> yeah, we'll all have Tom and Jerry. Not bad. Not bad. Dan. Hmm? Oh. I thought you were dressed, Jody. Well, I don't have time to dress when you oversleep. And will you please tell that Jerry to stop honking? Uh, Jerry? Oh, Jerry, yeah. I'll fix you some coffee for breakfast while you get dressed. Yeah, all right, Jody. Oh, mm, I'm stiff. I should think you would be after sleeping on the couch all night. <laughs> some people don't have sense enough to come to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have awakened me. I can't be bothered. You stop that honking. All right, all right, honey. I'll tell Jerry to wait a minute. Yeah. You stop, Jody. He'd better. I don't see why you can't take a streetcar to work instead of riding with that bum. Oh, he isn't a bum, honey. He's just a... Hey, are you coming or not? I'll be ready in a minute, Jerry. Well, I don't want to be late again just because of you. Don't you believe in knocking before you enter a house? Not when I'm in a hurry. Some men. I feel sorry for some of them myself. What was that? How about it, Van? You coming? Yeah, 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 I'm ready. I haven't the coffee made, so you'll have to do without it. Oh, that's all right, honey. What'd you do, sleep in your clothes all night? I, uh, I, I guess they're just rumpled. Well, come on. Van. Yes, Jody. I think you better go in and apologize to Mr. Evans. Oh, I can't just walk in and see him. You tried to walk in and eat with him last night, so you can walk in and apologize this morning. Tell him it was a joke. Tell him anything. All right, I will. Are you coming? Yes, sure, Jerry. I'm going to have to take your car to work next week. Mine's going to be in a shop. Yeah, sure. It's your week to drive us anyway. I apologize the old man Evans for. Oh, crazy thing that happened last night. What's this about eating with him? Oh, just a joke. Some joke? Yeah. Old man Evans would no more ask you to dinner than he would me. And he's never going to ask me, I can tell you. No, I guess not. Hey, Jerry. Yeah? You really think we can get the plant? Huh? What plant? The government plant over there. Remember we were talking about it? When were we talking about it? Well, just last... Uh, I don't know. Forget it. What'd you do, hang one on last night? I, uh... I was thinking about something else. I guess you were. What would we do with a factory like that? Nothing, I guess. White elephant, that plant is. War over, no good for anything. No, no, it isn't. Look, Van, you gotta be more like me if you're gonna get along. Yeah, I, I A million know. times, I told you. You gotta tell people off or they walk all over you. You gotta be boss. Yeah. Jody's a swell woman and all that, but you gotta be boss. Well, she's my wife, Jerry. Now you do what I tell you, you'll be happy. I'm happy. We rode down to the Rustlin' Martin plant as we had a thousand days before. And Jerry said the same things he'd said a thousand times before. Jerry meant well, but it was strange he didn't remember about the plant. I could see he didn't remember. That's why there wasn't any use in talking to him. When we got to work, I thought about what Jody told me to do, but I didn't go to see Mr. Evans. So the rest of the week, I kept giving her reasons why I hadn't gone to Mr. Evans, and each morning, she'd remind me to see him. He was still reminding me the next week when it was my turn to take Jerry and me in my car. It had been hot all day. I was tired when I drove down Lane Avenue with Jerry half asleep in the seat beside me. Give Jody another good reason why I hadn't seen Mr. Evans. It was a long, straight road, long and hot, long and hot, with a good reason for Mr. Evans, a good reason. I thought you'd like this place, Marola. That's why I asked you to have lunch here. Of course. <laughs> I had another good reason, too. Yes, I suppose you did, Mr. Evans. You're not the type of man who does anything without a reason. 
I'm a man who comes directly to the point. That's fine. So am I. When you and your lovely wife had dinner with me the other evening... Well, that was a fine dinner. Uh, glad you liked it. Uh-huh. Well, come to the point. Well, I wanted to find out your reason for quitting us. I see. There was a great future for you with Rustlin Martin. I don't think so. Oh, I'd had my eye on you. I'm sure you have. I'll stop playing with words. Is it true you and this Jerry have opened the government plant? You going to make knives there? That's right. You'll be in competition with Rustlin Martin. Oh, we realize that. I'm a tough man to buck, Marola. We can do it. Now, look here. We can use men with ideas. Ah, you had your chance. Oh, I know you went a long time without any recognition. Sorry, Evans, we've already made plans. We'll be in production on our new style kitchen knife within a month. It's too late for us to stop. Well, I'm a fair man, Marola. I wish you luck. It'll be a friendly rivalry. And... Come up again for dinner. Well, thanks. I don't think we'll take up that. Hey, what have we hit? Are you all right, Fan? It's good knife. It'll outsell. Hey, only. Fan. Fan. You okay? Huh? Oh. Are you hurt? Oh. No, I'm not hurt. Cars are on its side. Gotta get out. You yeah. might burn. What happened? You ask me. Let's get out. Yeah. My sleeve is torn. You should worry about your sleeve. Look at your car. Oh, front end's mashed in. What happened anyway? Didn't you see? I was sleeping. Well, I... Must have hit that wall there, then turned over. Yeah. How come you did that? Uh, I don't know. Looks like you skidded on the car tracks. Yeah, yeah, I guess that was it. You guess? Don't you know? Well, you see, Jerry, Mr. Evans and I were talking. Who? I... Mr. Evans. Is he here? Well, no, we were... sitting... Music. Well, here comes the cops. Well, what do they want? You find out. Now, listen, Van, you gotta give them a good story. You tell them just what I say. Why? Tell them you blew a tire. Then it's not a criminal case. Criminal? Stick to your story, you hear me? A tire blew and threw you into the wall. Criminal? Don't worry. You'll get out of it. All right, what happened? You the driver? No, he was. Well? I... Uh, tire blew. That make you go clean across the street and ram that building? Uh, the tire blew. We'll see. Frankie, check the tires on the rack and get witnesses. Okay, sir. Hey. Now, you sure you want to stick to the tire story? Sure, and along, and all of a sudden there was a big boom like a gunshot. That's yeah. what I thought it was. Then we started to swerve. Pretty soon we hit the building. Is that right? Hey, Joe. Oh, stay here a minute. I'll be back. It's okay, Van. I fixed it. Jody wanted to use the car tonight. Well, she's sure not going to use it now. It cost a lot of money to have it fixed. You better worry about fixing the side of that building. Yeah, I'll have to pay for it. The building didn't jump out and hit you, remember? No. Well, you sure you want to stick to that tire story? But, well, yeah. Okay, you better come with me. What for? Get booked. Jail. What he do? Jail. The tires on your jalopy show no blowout, and Frankie says you must have been doing fifty to knock a hole in the building like you did. This is a 30-mile zone. Now, wait a oh, minute. Now, if you're his friend, you better see what you can do about getting bond for him. Put me in jail. You don't smell it, but witnesses say it looked like a clear case of drunken driving. And we're having none of that in this town. Drunk. He's not drunk. Maybe not. We'll find out soon enough down at the station. Come on, you. No. Now, don't worry, Van. I'll get Jody. We'll get you out quick. Now, don't worry, now. I can't. I can't go. Sure you can. Just like this. Come on. <laughs> Criminal. Jail. It was late night before they came, Jerry and Jody. They had the guard unlock the door and let me out. Good old Jerry. And she was mad. Dear sweet Jody. <laughs> they said it'd come up in court the next week, so each day when I went to work, I'd look at the calendar next to my machine and count the days before the trial. The car was being fixed, so Jerry and I went to work on the streetcar until his car was out of the shop. I'd sit there at my rotary grinder and watch the calendar. 
I didn't have to mark the days off. I knew when they were. It was tomorrow. I'd have to go watch it, watch it. <laughs> well, it's my own plant, and I can do what I want in it. Mr. Marola here, first bet his shirt, then his suit, and he lost. <laughs> I, I wish I could have seen you in front of all those men in just a pair of shorts, darling. Well, we had a lot of fun. The boys love you for it. They're fine fellas. It's sure a busy place, isn't it? Uh, honey, the way Jerry's selling, we have to keep busy. And just a short time ago, nobody wanted the place. We'll have old man out Evans out of business before long. You wait and see. Oh, I don't want to do the old boy any harm. Van, you're too nice. Oh, Van can be tough when he has to be, Mrs. Marola. Well, I'm married to a caveman. You ought to know. <laughs> Am I a caveman? Show me. Oh. Hey, hey, not in the shop. <laughs> you want to disrupt? Plant morale. <laughs> She's my wife, isn't she? I better be. Come here. Van. Hello, honey. I'm proud of you, dear. You're my husband, my sweetheart, my. <laughs> going on here, you crazy? Don't cut it off. Gotta be proud of me. Cut it off. <laughs> What's the matter, Marola? You fall asleep? Oh, don't mind us, Fred. What? We... You dumb GB, look what you've done. Hmm? You ground it clean out. There's nothing left. I did? And it's the last time. You've been falling off for months now, but this is the end of the line. End of the line? That's what I said. I tried to be patient with you, Marola. I've covered up your mistakes as best I could. Now you gotta go to the big boss. Mr. Evans? Well, what for? He's got a rule. Don't fire anybody. Let him do the firing. Firing? I'm sorry, but that's how it's gotta be. I can't let my shop efficiency fall down because of one man. You're firing me. I'm not firing you. The big boss does that. He wants to be sure every case is justified. I won't have a job. This ain't your kind of work, Marola. I've been seeing it all along. Now, come on. I don't want to see Mr. Evans. You've got to. Come on. Fired. There he is over there, I think. Come on. Criminal. It's a bad thing to let one of them Blanchards bear down full, wrecks everything. Jail. Oh, like getting out of jail, huh? Well, I don't blame you. It's hard work. <laughs> what the jeep is, the pay is good. Good? Get into full production. Oh, Mr. Evans. Yes? This is Marola, sir. I'm letting him go. He's been dropping off in efficiency, late to work, low output, and today he burned up the Blanchard. I see. Too bad. Well, what's your side of the story, Marola? Well, don't be afraid. Speak up. Hey, he looks funny. Mr. Evans, I won't talk any merger until I've heard from Jerry. Now, now, Van. I know you're the brains of your outfit. That's why I came here to your office. No, I'm sorry, Evans. Jerry started out with me on this thing, and I'm a fair person. I believe he should have a voice in the matter. What kind of talk is that? I don't know. Say, aren't you the Marola who brought his wife out to my home? Thought I'd invited you to dinner? Yes, you are. Well, of course, I know how Jerry feels. I think he'd agree to merger with your company on one condition. Well, it would have to be a hard one to meet before I'd refuse. All right, Evans. Here it is. You'll retire from the business immediately and we'll take over both plants. We'll give you 23% of our stock issue for your factory and good name. That's a hard bargain. I'm afraid that's the only one we'll accept. All right. It's a deal. Well, Marola, go on and speak up. Mr. Evans here is giving you a chance. Uh, wait a minute. What is it? This man's sick. He ought to be after what he did to that Blanchard. I'm glad you accepted, Mr. Evans. I don't like to be harsh to any man, but you were our strongest competitor, and after all, <laughs> business is business. I understand, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> Say, uh, this is certainly a beautiful office. 
Yeah, we've been doing all right. This man needs a doctor. You'd better call his wife. Yeah, I will. I'll get his pal, Jerry, to help. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Evans, my wife is waiting outside in the car. We, uh, we're going to take a little vacation out west. As a matter of fact, you can take a vacation yourself now. How about it, huh? <laughs> Indeed. Well, good luck. I'll see you when we get back. That'll be a long time. I got my car. I'll take him. Hello, honey. Sorry to keep you waiting. You and your business. <laughs> well, we're through with it for a while anyway. I've been waiting so long for this van. And now we're starting. Yes. It's wonderful. Oh. Oh, I feel great. Like a new man, Jody. With Jerry staying to take care of the plant, why, everything will be fine. We'll just drive and drive until we hit the sunset. Oh. It's good to be alive. Mmm. I have examined him very carefully, Mrs. Morello. What can I do, Doctor? What can I do for him? There's not much we can do at the moment. But what is it? Please be calm, Mrs. Morello. Maybe a month, a year, perhaps longer. It's hard to tell about schizophrenia. Some return slowly, others overnight. Van. Van, dear, please. For me. Van, it's Jody. Jody. Van. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry, honey. What did you say? Why did you stop humming, dear? I like it. Oh, I don't know. I thought I remembered something. Oh, well, it slipped my mind. How do you like the new car? I like you better. <laughs> now, wait. I have to drive. All right, honey. It's a wonderful day. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Wonderful. Metamorphosized, a story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called high adventure. And heard in Metamorphosized's van was Ross Martin with Abby Lewis, Mort Lawrence, and Phil Sterling. Musical effects were by John Winters. So until we meet again, look around you wherever you are. Watch it, but don't live it. This thing we call high adventure. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Most people are asleep in the wee hours of the morning. Most people, but not hard-hitting Charlie Wilde. Charlie is the new private eye who hits his stride between midnight and dawn. But you won't have to stay awake all night to hear Charlie Wilde. Yes, for the benefit of us daytime folks, Charlie will recount another of his perilous escapades a little later this afternoon. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.